Welcome to CFRI's Cystic Fibrosis Community Voices, a video podcast series created by and for the Cystic Fibrosis Community. Oh, my name is Nam Su Zhu, and I am a senior research uh, scientist at uh, CF Research Lab at Stanford. Yeah, I have been working this lab almost uh, over two decades uh, since I came here at the end of 1990, uh, and then s- still working on it and uh, related to CF Research. Well, we are focused on. Uh, uh, the 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 role of uh, some mucosal gland that is in the uh, airway was the uh, typical role of some mucosal gland because it expresses a lot of CFTR in in their organ. So if it's missing, then w- you may expect uh, CF gland produce uh, like a normal glands and CF gland produce uh, mucus. But if there is no CFTR, then you may expect CFTR deficient uh, mucus. That means uh, the mucus came from uh, CF glands could be uh, altered in mucus properties. For example, like uh, increased uh, viscosity, elasticity of the mucus they produce. So they may, uh, I guess, impair mucociliary clearance as well as uh, some other uh, effect on a uh, CF lung. So we are interested in uh, glandular secretion initially. So we identify and discovered some of the defect in uh, CF glands uh, in airway uh, from human to uh, animal model, like uh, a CF ferret, uh, CF pig, in collaboration with the uh, uh, researchers in Iowa, uh, we discovered that uh, uh, defects, as well as uh, human, when there was a lung transplant at uh, Stanford Hospital, we brought the lung from CF lung, as well as some other disease control lung, and uh, we do the research as well. And uh, we found that there is a defect in a certain uh, agonist uh, induced, like a glandular secretion in uh, CF lung. So we published those stuff, and uh, I guess a uh, long time ago. And currently, uh, we are interested in this is also CFRI uh, funded uh, studies, interested in uh, mucociliary clearance. Mucociliary clearance is uh, like uh, our lung is 24 uh, 7 keep uh, cleared uh, uh, airway by secreting mucus from the gland as well as surface epithelial cells. And it contains a lot of anti-innate uh, defense molecules like uh, antimicrobial peptide and all those chemicals that deter uh, the growth of uh, uh, antimicrobial uh, stuff when you inhale. And either th- those mucus secreted by gland and su- uh, surface epithelial cells either kill it on site or suppress the uh, growth of the uh, inhaled uh, bacteria or virus. And that's one thing, uh, c- that's a chemical way of doing it. But uh, the other way is uh, your lung is continuously to move uh, this mucus from distal to proximal. So either you can uh, swallow it, then your stomach will kill them, like uh, mucus and all this entangled pathogens and if you swallow it then your stomach acid will kill it or you can speed it out if you want. So uh, unconsciously it's doing its job 24-7 until you die I guess. And as I briefly mentioned CF lung has uh, produced this altered mucus. So this altered mucus has increased in uh, like a viscoelasticity in its properties. So when you compare CF and normal of the mucociliary clearance, uh, CF, typically CF uh, lung has uh, impaired mucociliary clearance because you can imagine if the mucus is really viscous, 
it is hard to uh, clear by moving this cilia ciliary movement. And uh, we try to develop idea that may benefit to see a patient by uh, using a different type of agonist and then help uh, this mucus clearance and see a patient. So during our uh, earlier work uh, with the ferrets, so ferrets uh, came to us from local farm uh, freely actually. They provide us for research. And uh, what they do was at that time was they are testing I guess influenza, uh, the effect of influenza and in, uh, uh, ferret. Ferret is also good model for us as well because they, like human, they develop uh, this submucosal gland. The the organ we are uh, interested in, they develop like a human being, and uh, it's a good model uh, to study. And there is also a uh, ferret uh, model as well in Iowa. Uh, so we also use that uh, uh, CF uh, ferret too. So while we are doing uh, developing a method uh, to measure uh, mucociliary clearance in uh, uh, ferret, uh, our colleague, uh, his name is Jin Hyuk, Jin Hyuk Jong. He's now in Korea. He is uh, instrumental actually. He developed uh, this core uh, methodology, how to measure uh, mucociliary clearance in ex vivo, it's like uh, excised uh, trachea, and mounted on a uh, uh, silicate platform uh, you can see over there. And then that box, uh, mucociliary clearance box, in that uh, box you can drop uh, like a, a Xerox particle, ink particle, and then it moves as expected from distal to proximal. So you put the uh, trachea in certain uh, orientation, like a distal to, so from the upside, you can see the movement of particle from distal to, yeah, so that way. And uh, uh, it's a simple, but it's very elegant. So we can uh, measure mucosity clearance. While we are uh, developing uh, that uh, method and uh, testing different drugs, uh, its influence on uh, mucosillary clearance. And some of them are CFTL dependent, some of them are CFTL independent uh, pathways. So we are testing it and then we've, we've discovered, uh, yeah, I, I guess it's by accident. When you use a certain drug in combination, it increases uh, mucosillary clearance uh, velocity in a synergistic way. That means if you Add a drug A, it gives you, uh, for example, si uh, mucociliary clearance velocity like uh, 10. The other drug also gives you 10, that's the velocity, the speed of the particle movement. And if you combine those two, it's supposed to be arithmetically 20, but if it's uh, synergistically, then it goes uh, way above the uh, arithmetic uh, sum, so like a 40 or something. So we we somehow uh, discovered that uh, synergistic mucociliary uh, clearance uh, in sheep, uh, not sheep, uh, ferret. So well, what we are interested in, and then we apply CFRI funding, and they funded us too. So we uh, keep trying it, whether this is a, a ferret-specific event, or we can uh, duplicate this event in other large animal. Uh, like a pig. But uh, during our research, uh, initially, w uh, we just uh, harvest pig trachea from uh, at uh, Stanford, other lab, when they do surgery, like uh, uh, unrelated to our li uh, research, like uh, cardiovascular surgery. Then we harvest this trachea, pig trachea, from them, and then run the experiment. But then we found, oh, the mucociliary clearance uh, velocity is very low. Uh, so, and then when we add both uh, do these two chemicals, mix together and then see whether there is a, a synergistic mucociliary uh, velocity. But there is some hint. There, there was some uh, synergistic response, but the 
uh, velocity is so low, so we wondered why, why it's so low, because it's a different species or some other reason. And then after like uh, 10 or 15 peak tracheas, I realized that, oh, gosh, because when they do the surgery, uh, unrelated to our research, mm -hmm. they do surgery, they need intubation. Intubation means they put the tube inside of the trachea to the distal because they need a, a, like a oxygen during the uh, surgery. So while you are doing it, it may damage the surface. Mm. And in it somehow it messed up typically uh, the surface of the cell. And uh, when you measure mucociliary clearance, it requires intact pristine uh, cilia and all those uh, things, surface of serious cells, but it's damaged, so it causes all these uh, very low mucociliary velocities. So, so we try to uh, collaborate somebody who can provide us so-called pristine, not uh, intubated one. One way to do that is when they were born, you pee, then there is no chance to intubation or something. So we contact to Iowa, our, our colleague in Mike Warish's lab, and um, David, uh, I, I, yeah, David as well. And then they said, oh, okay, we can help you. So when there is a pig, pig was born, then in a couple of days, they shipped to us overnight uh, priority delivery method. And the next morning I can use it. And then I tried, it works. Although still the uh, velocity is uh, like half of the uh, ferret, but clearly they uh, demonstrate um, this synergistic mucosilia clearance can occur in a large animal as well. So now uh, we are moving a little bit different direction. Since we are so interested in the function of uh, some mucosal gland, what's the role of some mucosal gland in uh, mucociliary clearance, and especially in synergistic mucociliary clearance. So, well, how can we approach this research? And then uh, Jeff and I uh, discuss about it. And one way to do that is uh, dip using different animal that has no some mucosal gland in a way. So that's a rabbit. Mm -hmm. Rabbit has a uh, no, uh, it's a yeah, leg of uh, some kind of gland. And some certain animal like a horse, horse is also very limited uh, number of uh, some kind of gland in airway, as well as some uh, like a rat, uh, rabbit, uh, no, uh, mouse has only expressed some kind of gland in proximal, yeah, uh, near to uh, larynx. So if we uh, use a uh, rabbit, for a mucociliary clearance experiment and then see whether uh, we can determine the role of a uh, uh, gland in uh, synergistic uh, mucociliary clearance process. So we, we tested that idea and so far uh, it appears uh, without gland like a rabbit, we, we are not able to produce uh, synergistic mucociliary clearance. So that suggests, uh, although we need to run more experiment, uh, that suggests that uh, uh, the gland may play an uh, important role in uh, synergistic mucociliary clearance. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, that's what we are uh, trying to uh, establish. And uh, we also actually apply to CFRI, <laughs> wow. new grant. Okay. Wait, could you restate that? So sure. CFRI's grant is going to fund what part of your research? Oh, well, we, we, uh, we try to uh, identify what components of uh, mucociliary clearance mm -hmm. is important in, uh, like, for example, mucociliary clearance require a cilia beating. Cilia need to be moved and then secretion, secretion from surface epithelial cells as well as uh, granular secretion, that's a secretion, and uh, absorption. Fluid can be keep absorbing from the surface epithelial cells. So fluid secretion, fluid absorption, and uh, mucociliary uh, 
uh, ciliary beating, and uh, uh, the other portion is like uh, this uh, contract, uh, the airway contraction, narrowing. Mm -hmm. So we try to uh, establish whether these different component is necessary to uh, to show synergistic mucociliary clearance, and then. So that part was uh, funded by uh, CFRI, and then we established uh, those components uh, individually, and uh, it's important in uh, uh, mucociliary clearance as well, like uh, absorption. If you block the absorption, mucociliary clearance is increased, and all those things. Yeah. So uh, that has been fun, has been funding still until I don't know, maybe at the end of uh, May this year, and then we try to. Ex extend our research uh, uh, to investigate the potential role of uh, some mucosal gland in uh, synergistic mucociliary clearance in uh, rabbit. So that is our new proposal to uh, submit uh, CFRI. So, yeah. Initially, uh, my research was related to ion transport when I was in Missouri, uh, Columbia. Uh, more than 25 years ago. And I happened to work with the uh, researchers at the time. Those are two young scientists finished their uh, PhD and got a job in Missouri. And one is uh, T.C. Huang. He's doing all this CFTR kinetics. He's a well-known uh, uh, researchers, uh, researcher. And the other person is uh, Ion transport, he's especially uh, interested in ion transport in intestine. So as you know, CF uh, person has uh, some issues with the uh, intestinal block, um, meconium ileus and all those uh, issues, and as well as animal uh, model too. So uh, his name is Lane Clark. He's doing, uh, running a lot of, the, uh, he's one of the guy who actually developed uh, CF mouse. 1992. So uh, when he was a postdoctoral fellow in, uh, I guess, UNC with Lick Boucher, Boucher's lab, uh, they published together. And then he came to the Missouri. And I was interested in ion transport. And somehow, naturally, I uh, hooked, hooked up with uh, these two uh, uh, young scientists. And I was interested in the way they uh, do the uh, kinetics, channel kinetics, CFTL kinetics, as well as uh, uh, mouse that lack of a CFTL and no response to certain agonist and ion transport in uh, small intestine was pretty interesting and fascinating me. So, oh well, how about CF? And then I get into the naturally to a CF field. And I, when I finish my PhD there and I apply several lab, right? Uh, and all those labs are actually related to CF, actually. Mm -hmm. And uh, I want to further investigate uh, research related to CF. And then I, I chose to uh, Stanford and uh, Jeff Wine's lab. And our chemistry is well uh, dwelled each other. And we started to uh, some clinical and work uh, in at the end of 99 uh, with the real tissue and uh, lung transplantation, all those uh, initial work. Uh, so it was uh, very, yeah, initially it's very challenging because it is like 24 hours on call. You have to wait, like uh, if somebody was dying or uh, there was an accident and there is a lung transplant, then you have to go there, hospital, and then uh, harvest the lung. But uh, even though it is challenging and daunting job, but uh, when when you uh, discover something new, it is really uh, refreshing and yeah, rewarding as well. So.